Okay, good morning students. So today we're going to discuss week number two for Earth and Science Earth and Life Science entitled Earth's Material and Processes, which includes minerals and rocks exogenous processes. So here are the objective of our module number two. First, we're going to explain the difference between igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. Secondly, we're going to realize how geologic processes affect living condition. And lastly, we're going to make a social media post show, showcasing what you've learned from this lesson. So the performance tasks and groupings have already posted in our group uh, chat. So first, let's define what is rock cycle. So rock cycle diagram shows the continuous succession of rocks form. It is a process wherein uh, shows the rock formation on how it breaks down and the reform as a result of the geological processes that induce the formation of three types of rocks, namely igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. So, the processes may involve interaction uh, in our geosphere, we, along with the hydrosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere. So, in this module, we're going to uh, observe the detailed interaction of our subsystem to the Earth's material, namely the igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. So, this is the diagram that shows the rock cycles. As you can see, it is a series of processes or geological processes such as uh, erosion, transportation, weathering, uh, compaction, sedimentation, melting, subduction and burial, heat and pressure. So later on, we will discuss all that processes. But first, let's define what are the three types of rocks. So we all know that we have three types of rocks. Uh, we have the igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. So what is the difference? So igneous, uh, it came from ignis, or it means fire, okay? Because igneous rocks are uh, type of rocks that came from a uh, volcano or cooled down magma. So igneous rocks, those are any of uh, various crystalline or glassy rocks formed by the cooling and solidification of molten earth's material. So commonly we can find igneous rocks near a volcano or uh, reservoir, magma reservoir. And then we have a metamorphic rocks. So metamorphic rocks are any class of rocks that result from the alteration of pre-existing rocks. So it could be igneous, metamorphic itself, or sedimentary rocks in response to changing environmental conditions such as variation in temperature, pressure, and mechanical stress. So because of this factor, we can create a, a new type of rocks, which is metamorphic rocks. In addition, <clears throat> uh, in addition and subtraction of chemical components. And lastly, we have the sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are type of rocks that form through a deposition and solidification of sediments. So sedimentary rocks came from, uh, it could be other types of igneous, metamorphic, or sedimentary, another sedimentary rocks, which uh, become cemented. Okay, So the process specifically needed by sedimentary rocks to form is cementation, or yung tiyatawin natin na, uh, stratification of sediments and then after on it will solidify so it will the the pieces of sediments 
will be transported by water, ice, and wind. And later on, it will be solidified to become a sedimentary rocks. So within the rock cycle, we have several processes. So here are the uh, deposition, compaction, and cementation. The first process, the geologic process, uh, or rock cycle processes is rock cycle deposition. So in this process, uh, the sediments okay, will settle down to the bottom. So the sediments could be uh, dirt, soil, uh, it could also compose all uh, for bones of remains of living organism or other types of rocks. So once the sediments are being uh, eroded or weathered in the bottom of the ocean mostly, uh, it will become compacted. So first step in formation of sedimentary rocks is deposition. And then once it was eroded, it will compact at the bottom of the ocean. So <clears throat> compaction is the process wherein the rocks are formed on top of each other. So they will create a stratification or layering while the air and water pushes out. So it will become solid. Through the, the process of compaction, uh, the sediments, okay, the dirts and other materials are uh, become or becoming one. So after a long period of time, the compacted sediments will undergo the process of cementation. So cementation, uh, it is a process wherein loose sediments are glued together to form a one hard compact rocks known as sedimentary rocks. So these three processes are essential for the formation of sedimentary rocks deposition, compaction, and cementation. Next, we have here the melting, cooling, and solidification. So this process is essential for the formation of uh, igneous rock and as well as the metamorphic rocks. So melting. <clears throat> melting is a process caused by the increase of temperature in rocks deep below the surface of the earth okay so once a type of rock has been melted and subducted into the earth's surface it will uh, become a molten rocks it will uh, become a magma reservoir of a volcano uh, through the process of melting once a volcano erupted Okay, or a magma reservoir flow in a ducts or uh, conduit of a volcano and have a contact with air or earth surface, the magma cools down. So uh, once it was cooled down, it created a different type of rocks, which is specifically igneous. Because uh, igneous came from the word ignis, means fire. So it came from the magma. So snow cooling happens below the earth's surfaces. So there are type of cooling process of igneous. Once it was cooled uh, slowly, so mostly it happens underneath the earth, it will form a large crystals. Once a magma has been cooled down on the surface of the earth it is faster so it will create small crystals so once it would cool down the magma will solidify so solidification uh, the it is a process where in rocks are solidifies so those are the essential uh, processes for the igneous metamorphic and sedimentary rocks so now let's discuss the rock cycle itself so let's say we have a igneous rock so 
we've learned that igneous rocks came from cooled down magma. Okay? So, or magma or lava. And then the igneous rocks, once it was weathered or eroded and transported from different places, it can become a soft sediments. It can uh, uh, combine with muds and sand. So it literally become part of the sediments or dirt, soil, part, uh, soil particles. These sediments will undergo compaction and cementation. In the process of forming sedimentary rocks, the sediments will be comp uh, compacted. Uh, it will become deposited, compacted, and uh, cemented. So we created the sedimentary rocks. Once this sedimentary rocks has been subducted or buried beneath the surface of the earth, uh, there is a chance that sedimentary rocks will Okay, so it will become a magma, okay? So the magma or the sediments will melt. So not all sedimentary rocks are going up, are being subducted or buried beneath the earth. Some of them are being transported back and eroded to become a sediment who are not successfully become a sedimentary rocks. Okay, so that is the fate of the uh, rocks. So now we're here in the sedimentary rocks. Once the sedimentary rocks uh, experience heat and pressure, it will become a metamorphic rocks. So metaphor, metaphor or change in uh, composition. So from sedimentary, it will become a metamorphic rocks. So once the metamorphic rocks experience erosion and transportation, again, it will come back to become a sedimentary rocks. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the metamorphic rocks, uh, there is a chance that it could be buried in subdu uh, subduction and burial. So, the only fate for that is be to become a magma through the process of melting. But also, igneous rocks sometimes uh, it is buried uh, beneath the surface of the earth, and then from igneous, it will come. It will also have a chance to become a magma. So that is the rock cycle. So uh, it shows how the Earth's material are being recycled through the different processes such as erosion, transportation, weathering, uh, cooling and crystallization, subduction and burial, heat and pressure, compaction and cementation. So those are the fate of three types of rocks. So now let's proceed to the geologic processes. Okay, so what are the geologic or geological processes? They are the driven by external, uh, geologic processes can be driven externally or internal forces. So we have two classification. Exogenous means external force or exogen exogenic processes and we have endogenic internal processes and the genus processes uh, includes faulting folding and volcanic activities while the exogenous processes uh, consist of weathering erosion and deposition so for week number two we're going to discuss the exogenous processes okay so for a better understanding let's define them Endogenous forces or geolog uh, end endogenic processes or force are internal within or inside that exist deep within the earth. While exogenic forces, these are the force coming from the external forces that operates and act on the surface of the earth. 
So under endogenic forces, uh, it is known as constructive forces because they create uh, relief features of the surface of the earth. On the other hand, the exogenic processes are known as destructive forces because they, as they at that time, result in destruction of the existing landforms or Earth's material. So through weathering, erosion, and other uh, exogenic processes. Okay? So endogenic, since they are known as constructive forces, they create a volcano trenches and because of the endogenic forces we experience earthquake volcanic eruption okay uh, under exogenic forces the forces came from wind rivers and glaciers okay so let's discuss the exogenic processes so it occurs on or near the surface of the earth because the force that affects the earth's material are coming from the surface of the earth or external usually it is influenced or driven by gravity water wind and life or bio organism such as human it could uh, it is destructive occurrences that leave significant changes on the landscape and even in the ecosystem within the area. So, uh, we're going to discuss the weathering, mass wasting, erosion, deposition as the main exogenic processes. So, this image shows the uh, exogenic processes in our environment or ecosystem. So this shows the weathering, mass wasting. Okay, this is the mass wasting, uh, weathering through uh, rain or water and deposition. The sediments are being deposited at the bottom and then erosion. Okay. So First is the weathering and erosion. So most of the time, we have some confusion between the two. So let's define them first. So weathering, it refers to the decomposition of soil and their minerals and rocks through direct contact, contact with Earth's atmosphere. So weathering causes the rocks to break down. Okay? So it could be a chemical or biological, physical. No? So weathering, it is a process of decomposition or breakage of our rocks, weathered. Once the rock has been weathered, uh, the sizes decreases to sediments. While erosion, it refers to the displacement of solids such as water, wind, and ice. So when we say displacement, that is the change in their position. Since uh, rock or geologic materials are non-living things, they doesn't have the ability to move. Therefore, uh, once it was displaced, it needs external forces or exogenic forces such as uh, living things, such as human, animals, water, wind, and ice. So erosion from this image shown uh, is caused by water. So it transported from one place to another. Most of the time, the sediments move downhill to another places. Okay, so let's discuss weathering. Again, weathering is the disintegration of rocks, soil, and mineral together with other materials through the earth subsystem. So it happens even without the movement or transportation. Wherein that is the difference between the erosion. The, the focus of weathering is the geologic process that breaks the rock. So two important classification of weathering process uh, exists in physical and chemical weathering. So we have two types of weathering. The first one is physical. 
Physical weathering is caused by mechanical, okay? Mechanical weathering is a breakage or breakdown of rocks into smaller pieces. <clears throat> it can occur due to the changes, whether sudden or not. So, for example, uh, the changes, sudden change in temperature and pressure. Because of that, rocks could break. So, example is heat and drought. Uh, because of the heat and drought or uh, excessive uh, increase of temperature and loss of water, the soil might crack. And that is weathering. Okay? So, another example, when the wind, water, or ice abrade or scrape rocks or soil. That is an example of weathering. So, because of the strong rain, let's say, or a stronger winds, some rocks are being weathered near the coastal area. So, another image, this one, it shows how rocks are uh, damaged by the wind. Okay, this one, uh, there is a timeline that shows the, the collection of water here at the crack beneath or within the rocks causes them to accumulate and result to weathering until the time comes that the rocks are break down into pieces. And then we have this chemical weathering. So chemical weathering is a type of decomposition of rocks caused by chemical reaction. So most of the time it is oxidi oxidation or the presence of the oxygen. So uh, chemical weathering could also happen because of hydrolysis, carbonation, and acidification. Here in oxidation, the rocks or geologic materials are break down or can undergo decomposition because of the presence of oxygen. Hydrolysis, uh, it means that the water are decomposed in the presence of water. Carbonation, it is the composition of uh, carbon or the chemical reaction of carbon in the rocks. And then acidification or acid. One example of that is uh, acid rain. So acid rain can weather rocks or minerals. And then we have the erosion. So the difference is erosion, the rocks or minerals should uh, move from one place to another. So there should be a displacement happen. So in erosion, it is a process by which natural forces move the weathered rocks. <clears throat> Once a rock has been weathered or break down into tiny pieces or tiny rocks, pebbles, okay, so tiny rocks is pebbles and large rocks are uh, boulders. Okay, there are specific sizes, but commonly the term is pebbles and uh, boulders. So the soil from one place to another, that is a process of uh, Earth's surface. Okay, so commonly it is worn away by wind. It could be water, ice, or gravity. So the material moved by erosion is sediments, wherein that is the rock being weathered. So the process by which it moves rock debris or soil from one place to another. Okay, so that's why uh, most of the time erosion and weathering is uh, always, okay, always uh, changes definition or let's say there is always a confusion between the two because erosion always follow after the weathering. Next is the mass wasting. Okay, this is an example of mass wasting. So here on our PowerPoint, it shows how mass wasting happen. So it refers to the movement of large material down a slope or steep 
side hill or a mountain due to the pull of gravity. Okay, so this is an example of mass wasting. So mass wasting is very destructive within the area. Uh, once it increases the water flow, stiff flow, scars or no vegetation because once the uh, area or uh, once an area wherein it composed of geologic uh, materials and it doesn't have any trees, okay, it is steepy, uh, the slope are stiff, the gravity will take good care of it by producing a external force known as mass wasting. So it could also cause by vibration or moving off ground. So mass wasting is a type of erosion that is capable of making big changes. That's why uh, exogenous forces is destructive. So it, it doesn't just affect a single rock, but uh, what do we call this? A landform. The next one is debris flow. Okay, so debris flow are one of the most common but most dangerous of the various type of landslide because of their speed and consistency. Uh, along with the speed and consistency, debris. So it could. Uh, could, the debris could contain large rocks, so it, it's more dangerous. Unlike in uh, mass wasting, so steep, steep area only is needed for the gravity to take effect. But here in debris flow, it, uh, it can occur on a much larger scale. So debris flow tend to be mixtures of rocks and water. That's why uh, speed and consistency are added to its uh, hazard. So it is two to three times then times the dis density of a flooding stream. So this is an example of debris flow. So when the debris flow can happen, uh, it could happen on a deforestated area. Uh, it could happen because of a continuous rainfall. And uh, debris flow can also be triggered by earthquake or volcanic eruption. Okay, so there is a connection between the endogenous process. So, yes. Next is the mud flow. So what is the difference? So we have the mass wasting, the debris flow, and mud flow. So mud flow are highly fluid, high velocity mixture of sediments and water. If the debris, debris flow are dangerous because of uh, speed and consistency of the uh, falling down of soil, rocks, and when water, the mud flow mostly consists only uh, water and sediments. Okay, so it is uh, consistent. The consistency of mud flow is ranging from soup-like and wet concrete. So it is very hard to uh, escape from this one. So mud flow with it is considered as a, a hazard or natural hazard. Um, they move at a velocity greater than one kilometer per hour and tend to travel along the valley floor. So this is the difference, okay? So let's say this is the landslide, uh, debris flow, and then much higher. Well, the mud flow along with the mass wasting, uh, they appear much uh, lower, okay? Dito lang sa bandang baba. So they usually result from heavy rains in areas wherein there is such abundance of unconsolidated sediments that can be picked up by the streams, okay? And then we have the slumps, okay? Slumps or movements of soil 
along with the curved surfaces. Okay? So it doesn't need a uh, stiff area, water, and uh, slump are a natural phenomena wherein uh, soil move along the curved surfaces. In time, the area will uh, look curved because of the depression formed by sinking land. And then we have the sedimentation. So sedimentation is the accumulation of materials or sediments such as soil, dirt, rocks, fragments, and other particles settling down on the ground. So commonly the end uh, fate of the sediments are bottom of the ocean or uh, rivers. Okay. So they usually occur in streams and sea erosion. So here uh, in our PowerPoint, you can see the decreasing velocity of the stream flow that creates a sedimentation. So this is the river or uh, upper part of the river. And then the sediments flow along with the water and all of the heavy materials are uh, deposited here at the bottom. And then the water just flow. So that is the process of deposition. And then after that, it will followed by sedimentation and compaction. Compaction and sedimentation. And because of that process, sedimentation or sedimentary rocks are the only type of rocks that can preserve fossils. And that is because of their unique characteristic. No? They have this layer. Okay, so you can see this one, that is the another layer, okay, and then this one, okay, another layer. So it shows uh, that this type of rocks are made up of different materials, okay, so that is sedimentation. Next is the, uh, <laughs> and that is the end of our topic okay so hopefully you've learned something on our discussion if you have any question you can uh, comment down your question and if uh, if ever you need an uh, immediate answer you can uh, chat that on our uh, group chat okay so that's all for week number two so be prepared on our next meeting face-to-face -face online. Thank you and goodbye.